For any area A, we construct a vector A that is perpendicular to that area. This electric field vector E is passing through that area, making an angle theta relative to the area vector, which is perpendicular to the area. The flux of vector field lines that pass through an area is given by phi equals vector E dot vector A, which has magnitude E times A times cosine theta, where theta is the smallest angle between the two vectors A and E when they are placed tail to tail. The magnitude of the flux increases when the area increases or when the electric field increases in magnitude or when the electric field is parallel to the area vector. This occurs when theta is zero and cosine theta equals one. Charge Q creates these electric field lines which are passing through the faces of this enclosing box. The charge is located outside this box. The electric field lines from the charge enter the box but also leave the box. In this case, the net flux through the box is zero because the inward flux is canceled by the outward flux. We can tell whether or not a box contains a charge by measuring the net flux, which is the amount of flux that exits the box, minus the amount of flux that enters the box. Gauss's law is used to find the electric field due to charge distributions that are in the shape of lines, cylinders, cubes, and spheres. Surface normals are created that are everywhere perpendicular to the surface and are outward. We'll choose outward to be the positive direction of the constructed surface normals. This box has n equals 6 sides. The cylinder has n equal 3 sides, which is the round part and the two end caps. The sphere has a single surface. The sphere will enclose a point charge, Q. The cylinder will enclose a line of charge. The cube will enclose a sheet of charge. In practice, Gauss's law is applied on a surface that is everywhere equidistant from the enclosed charge distribution. The surface of this sphere is everywhere equidistant from the point charge that lies at the center of the sphere. The curved surface of the cylinder is everywhere equidistant from the line of charge at its center. The top and bottom faces of this cube are everywhere equidistant from the sheet of charge that lies at the center of the cube. The electric field lines are everywhere parallel to the surface normals and have a constant magnitude everywhere on that surface. Then Gauss's law is the sum vector E dot vector A for each of the n surfaces is equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon zero, where epsilon zero equals 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter is the permittivity of free space. In general, the net electric field lines that pass through the area enclosing a 3D charge distribution is due to the electric charges that lie within the enclosing surface. In general, Gauss's law is an integral of E dot dA, where dA is the differential area vector that is constructed to be perpendicular to each local area. The little circle on the integral sign means that the integration is done around an entire surface that encloses a volume. dA is a unit vector that is constructed to be everywhere perpendicular to the surface and outward. Sometimes the enclosed charge is found by integrating a volume charge density. dV is a differential volume element. In practice, Gauss's law is applied to a so-called Gaussian surface that is everywhere equidistant from the charge distribution and the electric field lines are everywhere parallel to the surface normals. In this case, the electric field is constant and it comes out of the integral sign. In that case, this flux integration is replaced by this sum of fluxes.
We will use Gauss's law to find the electric field of a point charge here. We know that the electric field lines point radially outward from the point charge, and we expect electric field lines to decrease with distance. We choose the Gaussian surface to be a sphere of radius r that is everywhere equidistant from the point charge so that E will be constant and come out of the integrand. The area vectors A are everywhere parallel to the electric field vectors E, and this makes theta equal zero at each point on the surface. For this single surface, Gauss's law is E dot A equals Q over epsilon zero. The area of a sphere is four pi r squared. The dot product gives E A cosine theta, which is zero, equals Q over epsilon zero. We saw for E equals Q over four pi epsilon zero r squared. Combining the constants, we often write this as K Q over r squared. We will use Gauss's law to find the electric field of a line having linear charge density lambda in coulombs per meter. For example, if a line of charge has lambda equals two coulombs per meter and the line is four meters long, then the line will contain eight coulombs. We consider two symmetrically placed charges, Q1 and Q2, that are equidistant from the center line. At this point here, the electric field from charge one points in this direction, which is straight away from charge Q1. The electric field from charge Q2 points straight away from charge Q2. Since Q1 and Q2 are equal, and they are equally distant, we see that the net electric field from these two vectors points directly away from the line of charge. By combining a full set of symmetrically paired pieces of charge, we see that the electric field due to the entire line of charge will point directly away from the line and will be perpendicular to the line. We still expect that the electric field will decrease with distance from the charge line. To apply Gauss's law, we want to surround the line with a Gaussian surface on which the electric field is constant, and that surface should be everywhere equidistant from the line of charge. This occurs if we surround the line of charge with a cylinder. The electric field is also parallel to the surface normal. We have cosine of zero equals one, except on the two end caps where the electric field is perpendicular to the surface, cosine of 90 equals zero. The enclosed charge is Q equals lambda L. We sum over the three surfaces, E dot A, E times the area of the round surface times cosine of zero plus two end caps that have electric field E, area A, but cosine 90 equals zero. The area of the curved surface of the cylinder is two pi r times its length L equals the enclosed charge over epsilon zero equals lambda L over epsilon zero. We cancel the L and solve for E equals lambda over two pi epsilon zero r. This sheet of charge consists of a set of lines of charge. Using the same reasoning for the line of charge, we see that the electric field E of a sheet of charge is everywhere perpendicular to the sheet. We will find the electric field of a sheet having uniform charge density sigma, which is measured in coulombs per square meter. These electric field lines are pointing directly away from the top and bottom sides of the sheet, but the electric field lines may decrease with distance away from the sheet. We choose the Gaussian surface to be a box that surrounds the sheet. The surface of the box is everywhere equidistant from the sheet, so that the electric field has constant magnitude everywhere on the surface of the Gaussian box and it comes out of the integral. The box has six sides. The top and bottom sides have area vectors that are parallel to the electric field vectors. But for the other four sides, the area vectors are perpendicular to the electric field vectors 
we will have theta equals 90 degrees and cosine of 90 equals zero. Gauss's law is the sum of the six dot products over the six surfaces of the Gaussian surface. We have the sum of E dot A equals the enclosed charge over epsilon zero, but the enclosed charge is sigma times the area A of the sheet. Four terms in the sum are zero because cosine 90 equals zero for the four sides of the Gaussian box, leaving only the top and bottom surfaces, and we get two E times A times cosine of zero equals sigma A over epsilon zero. The electric field E equals sigma over two epsilon zero, which is constant and does not decrease with distance. So the electric field of a single point charge Q goes down as one over R squared. The electric field of a line of charge goes down as one over R because there's a lot of charges there. The electric field of a sheet of charge does not decrease with distance. We will use Gauss's law to find the electric field within a sphere of radius big R and charge density that depends on radial distance outward from the center of the sphere as rho of R equals BR to the fourth, where B equals constant. A sphere of radius little r has surface area A equals four pi r squared. Volume V equals four thirds pi r cubed and differential volume dv equals four pi r squared dr. The total charge big Q on the sphere is found by integrating rho of r from r equals zero to little r equal big r. We have Q is the integral of rho of r dv. The charge density rho is br to the fourth and the differential volume is four pi r squared dr. So we get four pi b big R to the seventh over seven, or little b equals seven big Q over four pi R to the seventh. It's easier to measure the total charge on the sphere and its radius than it is to measure b. Within a Gaussian sphere of radius little r less than big R, Gauss's law is E dot A equals one over epsilon zero times the charge enclosed within the Gaussian sphere. As little r grows from zero to big R, the Gaussian sphere encloses an increasing amount of charge. So E dot A equals E times the surface area of the Gaussian sphere, which is four pi little r squared, times the cosine of zero degrees, which is the angle between the outward electric field vector E and the normal to the Gaussian surface, which is also outward. The charge enclosed within the Gaussian surface is one over epsilon zero, integration from zero to little r, rho dv, but the charge density is br to the fourth, and the differential volume is four pi r squared dr. So we get four pi b little r to the seventh over seven epsilon zero. Now that we have integrated, we cancel two of the r's. We can't cancel the r before we integrate. And then we saw for the electric field, E equals BR to the fifth over seven epsilon zero. When the radius of the Gaussian sphere, little r, is larger than big R, the sphere of radius R acts like a point charge, and we have E equals KQ over R squared, where Q is the total charge in the sphere, as found above. Within the sphere, the electric field grows as R to the fifth, but beyond the surface of the sphere, the electric field decreases as one over R squared. Use Gauss's law to find the electric field within a cylinder of radius big R and length L, whose charge density is rho of R equals BR to the fourth, where B equals constant. A cylinder of radius little r has curved area A equals two pi r L, volume V equals pi r squared L, and differential volume dV equals two pi r L dr. 
The total charge Q within the cylinder is found by integrating rho of r from little r equals zero to big R. We have Q is the integral of rho of r dv, but the charge density rho is br to the fourth, and the differential volume dv is two pi r l dr. So we get total charge Q equals two pi b big L big R to the sixth over six or we saw for little b equals six big Q over two pi L big R to the sixth. Within a Gaussian cylinder of radius little r less than big R, Gauss's law is E dot A equals electric field E times the area of the curved surface two pi R L times the cosine of zero, which is the angle between the electric field vector E and the surface normal A equals one over epsilon zero times the enclosed charge found by integrating rho throughout a volume. But again, the charge density rho is br to the fourth and the differential volume is two pi r l dr. So we get two pi b l little r to the sixth over six epsilon zero. Now that we've integrated, we cancel one of the r's. We can't cancel an r before we integrate and solve for the electric field E equals BR to the fifth over six epsilon zero. For little r beyond big R, the Gaussian surface is beyond the surface of the actual cylinder, so the enclosed charge stops changing and we have E equals lambda over two pi epsilon zero R, where lambda equals the total charge Q previously found divided by the length L. Within the cylinder, the electric field grows as r to the fifth, but beyond the surface of the cylinder, the electric field decreases as one over r.